All right. What is up, YouTube? I'm Cavorty. We're going to be looking at the fourth place New Zealand LLDS tournament series deck profile. Now, remember, the LLDS or LLDS tournament series is basically the European equivalent to a localized competition. Basically, there are ways to move up the ladder, and there are prize cards involved at the end of the Candy Rainbow. Now, most of these tournaments are localized um, for the most part, and this is, well, Metaphys. One of the reasons I honestly wanted to look at this is, well, ju just as I said, when was the last time you saw Metaphys actually do anything competitively? I don't think I've actually seen this deck perform at all. You know, the core strategy of, th of this deck pretty much involve everything being banished, and I think a lot of people kind of like, well, you know, things like Dimensional Fissure, you know, Macrocosmos, are limited to one. So things like Ritual Beast and whatnot kind of fall to the wayside. And, you know, decks that kind of revolve around those same engines sometimes don't really get the recognition that they deserve because sometimes they can't really be successful. So for something like this to kind of show up and do something, I think is pretty impressive. So Metaphys in general, I've been talking about them a little bit since they've come out. Um, I've kind of had indifferent opinions about them, and honestly, I, I think I'm more excited for this than I honestly should be. So anyway, we'll dig into the deck profile here, uh, talk about a couple things, and it'll probably be about it here. So, one copy of Snow. Uh, this is kind of one of those things that you get to it, you have access to it, you're not really committing a lot to having Snow. Having it be a level 4 that's recurrable also can sometimes play a role, but the key to banishing those 7 cards is the reason why you're dedicating a slot to this. Outside of that, I mean, you get access to it the later the game goes. You get to do some pretty cool, crazy things. So, I will say that um, Snow as a tech choice for this deck is actually pretty damn cool. Now, three Metaphys to Delos. So, this card is special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys card. You can banish all other face up special summon monsters on the field. If this card is banished during the standby phase of the next turn, you shuffle the one uh, or shuffle the Spanish card into your deck and then banish one Metaphys card from your deck except for Dedalus. So, you splash summon, you get a free nuke on all splash summons. Um, if it's banished during your standby phase, shuffle it back into the deck, banish another. Self-replacement cards are pretty damn good. Now, this is the interesting one. This is uh, the Pendulum. This is actually, I think, the only Pendulum that they've got so far. So, Pendulum scale when your opponent or when your monster is targeted for an attack, target one of your Metaphys monsters that is banished or in your graveyard. Banish that card, and if you do a special summon that monster in attack position, hey, you guys remember when we were talking about Dedalus over here? So summoning through the effect of a Metaphys card is pretty good. And then a uh, monster effect over here, when your monster is targeted for an attack, target one of your Metaphys monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, banish that card, and if you do, special summon that monster in attack position. During the next time I face after this, during the turn this card is banished, you can special summon this card this way, you can only use each effect of Metaphys decoy once per turn. So you have a self-replacement card once again, and a deet code, uh, a way to reroute an attack. Basically, if you haven't realized, kind of your core strategy here is going to be, hey, we're going to beam out big guys, just kind of do our thing. But interesting pendulum scale effect. Metaphys, Neftaphys. So if this card is special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys card, you can banish all set spells drop cards on the field. And if this card's banished during your next standby phase, you can shuffle this banished card into the deck and then add one Metaphys from your deck to your hand. So the Dalos over here gives you additional banish targets. Meanwhile, you get recruitability out of Nephthys. So so far we have special summon destruction and we have back row removal. Honestly, probably two not so great things you need for a localized level. These cards are probably amazing. Um, let's see here. Oh, Metaphys Ragnarok. So if this card is normal special, I mean, banish the top three cards of your deck, and if you do, this guy gets 300 attack for each Metaphys card banished. Uh, this is, in fact, a level four, so you're not going to get super high attack points here, but yeah. This card inflicts bad damage to your opponent. You can switch someone one level five or higher Metaphys monster from your deck, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. Oh, this is actually pretty spicy. So here's what I think your most value out of this. Uh, use this ping your opponent, swap summon possibly one of the, yeah, especially summon something like the Tyrant Dragon or the Dedalos, and then, you know, things like you can set up for the Metaphys for the search on the next turn because uh, it will be banished during the end phase. But this card actually puts in a lot of fucking work. This card's a lot better than I remember it being for this archetype. Hmm. And then the last big guy we've got going here 
is Metaphys Tyrant Dragon. If this card is special by the effect of a Metaphys card, it's unaffected by trap effects. Also, if it attacks a monster, you get to make a second attack. And if this card is banished during your standby phase of the next turn, shuffle this back in deck and special one Metaphys from your hand, but banish it during the end phase of this turn. Hmm. It's almost like we've got a chain of events going here. Kind of sucks that, I mean, he does retain trap immunity. We still don't have the core things that I like to see in this deck, you know. <laughs> normal summon monster removal, but I mean, hey, we got a nuke on special summons, so I can't really complain in that regard. Like, take what you can get. Um, this build is tagging one copy of Necroface. I'm pretty sure we've seen multiple people trying to play multiple Necroface. I don't think you want to get too technically crazy with this card. You have to remember, like, Necroface does require commit a normal summon to shuffle back, and then, you know, of course it's banished. Each player banishes five. Uh, I don't think you want to go too turbo crazy with this card, um, but understand that it is still a very good tech option that this deck has going for it. And of course, one summoner monk discarding spell cards, especially some of those guys. Pretty damn good. Um, now, their field spell as Metaphys. Once per turn, banish one Metaphys card from your hand. Draw a card. Okay. And then, once per turn, if your Metaphys card in its owner's possession is banished, you get to apply one of these effects. So, all monster on the field. I lose 500 attack and defense except for Manifest. And the opponent's turn, it just should, or shift everything to, you know, a different position. So honestly, I like this effect because you can actually slow down the opponent from killing you. But you have to somehow trigger getting a banished effect on the opponent's turn. So, kind of, might be a little bit harder than they think it is. Um, something new we got, Crossbreed. Banish two monsters from your hand and or face up from your field with the same original type and attribute but different names. Add one monster with the same original type and attribute as those monsters um, from your deck to your hand, but with a different name. So, whew, you get some spicy shit here. Honestly, this whole card just sets up the whole deck. I know a lot of people have a lot of complaints about Crossbeat just being a shit card, and I agree with you. Um, this card, to me, seems really incredibly terrible at times, but in this deck, this card just fits right in. Honestly, being able to banish any of these cards uh, to set up for your next turn, yeah, this is literally the definition of value time. Um, one dimensional fissure, as I was talking about earlier, this deck does feed off of removal, so you're going to have to play a lot of games where you're going to have to make sure you are setting up key uh, points to make sure floodgates will go through. So things like these two cards are going to go hand in hand with just being the anti meta tyrant you're trying to be. Triple Gold Sarcophagus. You're kind of doing the same thing Thunder Dragons are doing in this deck, but Thunder Dragons, I think, can do it better for the most part, but this literally will grant you access to pretty much anything you need. Uh, Metaphys Factor. So we have... Oh, no, this is continuous. This is their field spell. Okay. Each turn, one level 5 or higher Metaphys monster you normal summon can be sp summoned without tribute, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. Your opponent can activate cards or effects in response to your Metaphys monster effect activations. This is pretty damn good. We now have built-in removal for the deck, even more than we had. Um, honestly, this card seems pretty good. N normal summons are pretty good. Um, triple copy spotted duality need to set up for just consistency, honestly. Then one Raigeki for board wipes. Uh, traps, one Macrocosmo. Uh, triple Metaphys Ascension, discard one Metaphys, draw a card, and then you can banish one Metaphys from your deck. Uh, if this card is banished, you can add one Metaphys card from your deck to your hand, except for Ascension. Pretty interesting trap card. I honestly wish this was continuous, but it'd be kind of broken, honestly. And then two Metaphys Dimension. If your opponent swash summons a monster except during damage step, you can target one of your banished Metaphys monsters. Bush summon it, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. If your uh, Metaphys card in its owner's possession is banished while this card is already face up in your own trap card zone, target one card your opponent controls, banish it. So they gave them additional spot removal. I honestly really like what they're trying to do with this card. Um, it's not bad, honestly. T today, today's mood is incredibly happy. Card editions. Um, the extra deck, not too crazy, honestly. One underclock, one Shazbania, Bomber, Saruji, Tornado Dragon, Lightning, uh, Utopia Prime, Galaxy Lord, Baguski, Utopia, Hope Harbinger, uh, Shirindine, Solar Star Eater, Omega, and of course, Metaphys Horus. Uh, this is a really interesting tech choice, but I mean, having access to level 6s is, is no real problem, honestly. <sighs> oh, wait. <laughs> Interesting cards, my ass. But the uh, side deck here, 107, Lancelot, Heartland Draco, two of the hip Hoshigen, 
one Phoenix, one Dimension, one Torrential, and triple Waterfall of Dragon Souls, just to make sure we can get off extra searches and things like that. Honestly, I'm surprised this deck got fourth place. I'm not going to lie. I think it's definitely cool that we get the chance to see something like this show up in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But what do you guys think about Metaphys? Please, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And that's all I got for this video, guys. Peace. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.